Welcome back guys in this video we are going to talk about should component update lifecycle method. Now this method is going to return true by default which means react handles this method on its own and the component will update in case if there are changes to state and props. However if you explicitly define this method and go ahead and return false then the component will not update. So I will show you the example. So let's say this is my app component. Okay, and uh, I will create a new component which will be a child component. And I'll name it as home.js. I'll import React from React and create a class component called home that extends React component and it'll be having a render method which will return react element using JSX. This is home and this is to export default home so its parent component can consume it. Okay, so I'll just say home. Okay, now let's say for some reason uh, you know inside of component did mount which is basically called when the component gets mounted so you can see that it gets called component did mount when the component gets mounted okay so if you have some logic if you are accessing some API uh, which is going to get some data and then you are doing a set state inside of the component did mount after you receive the data but the state is not changing which means the data that you are receiving is the same as it was before. React will still go ahead and call the render method uh, and go ahead and update the DOM uh, even though the data doesn't change because we know that every time you do a set state uh, React is going to go ahead and render. Okay, Even when the prop changes uh, also it renders. Right. So how do we stop that? So let's go ahead and define a constructor method and inside of this we'll say this dot state so we'll define an initial state and we'll say number is zero for example okay now inside of component did mount uh, I don't have an API so I will go ahead and use set interval uh, so kind of a hypothetical way of uh, you know doing set state every uh, one second let's say okay so let's say const my interval is interval is equal to set interval and it accepts a function so I'm going to use an arrow function okay and uh, inside of this I'm going to do a set state so this dot set state notice that I'm using arrow function so this will not point to set interval this will point to the class home so that's why I'm able to use this dot set state otherwise I had to bind the uh, this if I was using the ES5 function okay so I will say number so I'm not going to change the value I'm, even though I'm doing set state but the value of the number is not going to change okay so let's do that and guys it's important that if you go ahead and do a set interval inside component did mount when the component gets unmounted uh, so component will unmount you need to clear the all of your subscriptions uh, that you have subscribed inside of component did mount so here I have set interval I need to clear my interval okay so I will say clear interval and I will say instead of saying cons we can say this dot my interval so this becomes a property of the class okay I can do this dot my interval okay so this will clear the interval once the component is unmounted okay so so what you should expect to happen so what would happen is basically that every one second of course we have to define the timeout okay so every interval of one second uh, set state will be called which is going to tr set the state and the value of number but the value will not change we are setting the same value but the render method will be called 
uh, every one second so let's see if that happens refresh and you can see the render method is being called one two three four continuously it is being called right and if we check the value of this dot state you can see the random method is being called which is this and we still have zero okay so this is not good right this is not very performant if the data is not changing why should we call random method again so you can actually stop this okay uh, there are different ways of doing this uh, you can either use should component update or you can also use pure components in future videos I will be explaining to you what pure components are but let's stick to a concept of uh, should component update first okay so this method basically it gives you access to next props next state and by default it returns true which means the component should update so you need to check conditionally uh, you can check if next state so in next state you will have the whatever the set state value has been there for the next state so the next state dot number is equal to this dot state dot number then return false don't update the component which means if the new value of the state is the same as the old value then don't update else return true which is actually by default sorry true which means go ahead and update the component okay so let's see what happens now if I go ahead and refresh you can see the first time it's rendered because that's what it should happen but now it is no longer being rendered okay how do we know this is actually working what we can do is we can do a console log over here so console one okay so let's see what am I getting in next props fresh you can see in next prop currently we don't have anything sorry uh, next state not next prop next state <coughs> okay you can see the number is zero right and what do we get in the next sorry current state this dot state So you can see both the values are zero hence we are returning false which means do not update the component okay so what is happening is actually that every interval of one second this dot set state is being called which is setting the value of number and setting it to the same value so at that time every one second should component update is also being called that's why you see so many console locks okay and it is checking if the uh, previous value of the state is same as the new value then current value then go ahead and do not update the component okay now if you want to see uh, that it actually works what we can do is this time we can change the value to 1 and see what happens so you can see first time it's rendered and now next prop is 1 which means the new state is 1 and the previous state was zero okay that is why they were not equal hence it was rendered okay so I can console one I can say that uh, component was rendered so you can see the first time the component was rendered because the new state which is one was not equal to the previous state which was zero so these, these th two things were not in equal that's why it went into the else condition and uh, that's why the component got rendered the first time but the second time the previous uh, state was one and the uh, previous uh, new state which is the current state was also one hence this condition was met and that's why the component did not update because it returns false okay so, uh, so hopefully this is clear to you what should component update is uh, if you go on to the react documentation you have some more information about it okay so 
it talks about that you should use this method to let react know if the components output is not affected by the current change in state of props the default behavior is to re-render in every state change and in vast majority of cases you should rely on its default behavior so what, what react is saying that do not use it unless you have to okay um, and this method only exists as performance opti optimization do not rely to prevent a rendering as this can lead to bugs okay so by default it's always true which means component should update for performance optimization so you should not idly go ahead and use it explicitly uh, and set it to false unless you really need it okay so it's talking about use pure component instead and pure component performs shallow comparison of props and state and reduces the chance of you'll skip an un, uh, unnecessary update okay so in future videos i'll be explaining to you what they are and it's also saying that if you're confident that you want to write it by hand you actually want to do it explicitly then then use this dot props with next props and this dot state with next state and that's exactly what we have done we have used the uh, this dot state with next state okay uh, you also get props in next props so if you pass something over here from the parent component let's say name um, and then if I try to access I'll get rid of all of this so you can see you have next props Imran available if you had some logic applied in the parent component where uh, you were actually you know giving the new props uh, compared to the previous one you can do a similar comparison but that time you will not do a comparison between next state and this dot state you will do a comparison between next prop and the new prop that has been changed so which is basically what react is saying that you know do a comparison between next prop and this dot uh, sorry this dot props with next props okay guys so I won't explain that one but it is pretty similar so I hope you get the idea if you did like my video guys uh, please do like and subscribe to my channel and uh, if you have any questions you can leave it in the comment box and I will see you in the next video take care guys bye bye